Hey guys. Uh, so for a while now, I wanted to start blogging more regularly, but I came to the realization that I'm better at talking than I am at writing. So I decided to do this instead. Welcome to Tangent Tuesday, where I'm basically going to talk your ear off for however long it takes to get all my thoughts out into the world about something that's hopefully related to dog training because that's what this is supposed to be about, but it is a tangent. So let's see what happens. Uh, also, quick side note, I really wanted to have the ability to edit this video, maybe put in some special effects that would require downloading video editing software and then learning how to use it, which is totally a thing that I could do, but not a thing I exactly have time for right now. So you're kind of stuck with just uh, raw video footage. So here we go. Today's tangent is going to be about luring fearful dogs. So as luring in general, I don't have a problem with. Um, if you can teach your dog to do a thing with luring, excellent, good for you. I do have a problem with luring a scared dog through a scary situation. Uh, so what the heck am I talking about? Let's say I'm walking my dog down the sidewalk and I mean, I know this is a thing around here and I know this is a thing in Boston. It's probably a thing where you into um, wherever you are. None of that came out right. So we're back to that part where this is raw footage. It's probably a thing where you are too. That's what I meant to say. Anyway, back on topic. So I'm walking my dog down the sidewalk. I get to a crosswalk and there's like that bumpity bit before you get to the crosswalk, which I'm relatively confident is for people who are vision impaired. So they know like, hey, heads up, you're about to walk into traffic, uh, but it could be totally wrong. Anyway, you know, plenty of dogs who get to that point on the sidewalk, they get to the bumpity bit and like they accidentally step on it and it's just like, <gasps> end of the world. Sidewalk just bit me and no, I will not walk over that. It is not happening. Uh, and there are a lot of people out there who are like, Jeez, I just put it in the dog's face and just steer them over the bumpity bit and away they go. And for a lot of dogs, that works. And that's great for those dogs. Um, and not that scary, so maybe not the best of examples. But let's say, for example, I'm terrified of heights. That's a thing though, like I'm legit, I'm terrified of heights. So I guess if anyone out there wants revenge on me, you can just like leave me on a mountain somewhere, but please don't do that. Uh, anyway. If I'm faced with a bridge that's very high off of the ground and like below me is just an abyss and if I fall it's like instant death just like think big terrifying scary bridge in the sky it like probably is one of those ones that like rocks when you walk on it like no thank you um, and for a lot of our dogs, that's what some of these surfaces look like. Oh, that's my alarm. Alexa. Alexa. Stop. Thank you. So remember that part when I was like, this is raw video. <laughs> there you go. Um, that's my reminder. I have to go pick up my son. So we have five more minutes, guys. This is going to be capped. Um, so anyway. Uh, terrified of heights, great big bridge in the sky. Okay, I'm not walking over that bridge. No, no thank you. Nope, nope, nobody, nope, nope, nope. Uh, if you were to put, I don't know, a uh, Nadamu mint chip ice cream in like six places throughout the bridge, I might step onto the bridge to get the first one. And then I might go a little bit further to get the next one, but then I'm gonna get to that point where I'm like, we going across my happy dabby bridge, where all of a sudden I realize how far I've gotten onto the bridge and I'm gonna panic. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Having my ice cream, I'm gonna look around, holy crow, how did this happen? I'm out. 
I'm still scared of heights and um, that bridge might be a little scary, but also that ice cream was a trap. It was a trap. So when we lure our dogs through scary situations, like I see a lot of people who kind of drive their dog over, like if you think about PT equipment, like trick training is a big thing now. I love it. Please, everybody trick train your dogs, do all of the fun stuff. Um, but if we pull out a wobble board and your dog's like, nope, mm -mm -mm, I'm not stepping on that. Your best option might not be to put food in their face and just drive them up onto it. Um, will work for some dogs, but not for all. So, why? Right, so you get there and then it's kind of like, I did this scary thing and I almost feel like a trap, right? So like the cheese shows up and I'm like, I don't know, because the last time you pulled this thing out and tried to get me to do the thing, it like bit me or like it made some big scary noise or like a thing happened and I didn't like it and I'm not falling for that again because that's gonna be me with the bridge and the ice cream. Like you can put all the ice cream, you can you could douse it in ice cream and chocolate sauce and soy whip and like, no thank you. I'm, I'm not doing it, it was, it was a, that's a trap. <laughs> nope. Um, so what do we do? Well, we take that situation and we teach our dog how to get through it by letting it be their choice to do it in the first place. And like, hold on, how does that even work? How am I gonna get my dog to do this? It's a thing and they'll have far more trust in you, far more trust in your training sessions and they'll build a lot more self-confidence if you let them figure it out. You're gonna help them but let them make the choice to do it. So what does that even look like? Um, let's say that we're back to our wobble disc and our dog that is avoiding it like lava and maybe we did try luring him up there and he tippied it once and then jumped like 500 feet in the sky or ran away backwards and there's no way on this green earth he's getting anywhere near that thing again. And then we find ourselves in the situation where we pull out the cheese and the wobble disc is visible and the dog's like, nope, uh-uh. I'm not doing it, so it's a trap, it's a trap. I don't like it, I don't want it, it's not worth your cheese. What could we have done differently? So we're gonna shape it. And we might use targets, uh, depending on how scared the dog is. So first let's talk about what that might look like if we're not using targets. So I'm gonna take my wobble disc out and I'm gonna stabilize it. So you can use pillows underneath it on either side, depending on how big your wobble disc is. Maybe cushions, uh, blocks of wood. I have literally a collection of old Ikea shelves because there's like this point in my life where I was like, these are cute, I want them all over my house. And then I realized how absolutely terrible they are at actually functioning as shelves. Like they're the worst, don't waste your money. So they're just like all stacked up in my closet. <laughs> Um, but you could use those, right? put them underneath. I don't know, go to Goodwill, get creative. You'll figure it out, roll up some towels. Um, I, I believe in you. Anyway, stabilize it. So it's not gonna wiggle wobble all over the place. And you're gonna start by just having it in the room, entering your dog into the training session. And if they look at it, you're gonna click or use your marker word. If your dog's nervous about your clicker, and then throw the food away from the scary thing. So your dog's just been rewarded with food and space. So I got rewarded with my delicious thing and I get to go away from the scary thing. That wasn't so bad. Okay, I wanna try looking at it again because I really like that yummy thing and I get to run away from it. So I'm gonna look at it, click, food. Okay, I'm in it. This game is not terrible. I can look at the thing. I will keep looking at the thing. And we just let the dog keep volunteering to look at the wobble board and reward away. And look at the wobble board and reward away. And then we're gonna get some momentum going. Right? Behavioral momentum is a lot of fun and great to use to your advantage if you know what you're doing. So the dog's gonna start getting a little bit 
closer to the disc as they're looking at it. So now we're clicking approaches to the disc because the disc is not so scary anymore. We've removed all of the expectations of you have to step on the thing, right? Those are gone. And now we might even get a little bit curious about the disc, right? What is this thing even about? Sure, I'm a little afraid of it, but I think I wanna go check it out. And as we're rewarding the dog for approaching and approaching, we can start rewarding them for approaching a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And then when they get there, they might sniff it. <sighs> I'm gonna click that and like throw a whole heckin' handful of food on the floor. It's a jackpot and dogs get it. You can argue with me on that if you want to because I'd love to hear your opinion, but I'm relatively confident that my dog knows that when I throw 10 cookies on the floor, it means he did something way more epic than when I just put one cookie. There's, there's, I'd like to think they could count at least to five. And that I think was proven at some point, but anyway. Awesome dog getting closer and closer to the big scary wobble board. And then what I'm hoping for is that he might step onto it. And this is the part where I'm gonna be really careful because I'm gonna click as soon as that little paw leaves the foot and heads towards it, but I'm gonna click before it touches. Right, so I'm clicking the intention, the I am picking my foot up with the intention of putting it on the thing. We'll take that and again, I will reward you away from the thing. And as you're getting more confident, you may pick up your foot and step on it. This is the part where you have to be good at this. Because if your wobble board is stabilized, it's not gonna move too much, but it's still going to move. It's gonna do something. There's no such thing as perfect level, right? It's gonna do some kind of wobble. You might not notice, I bet your dog is, especially if you have a nervous Nelly. So they're gonna touch it, you're gonna click, you're gonna still reward away from it, and then I want you to drop all your expectations. Drop them, drop them. You might have been at the point where you were only clicking for sniffing and lifting feet at the wobble disc, but your dog might not be ready to turn back around and run back to that thing, and that's okay. That's fine. You can back up to just clicking looks. Yes, and build yourself back up there again, because the more times you build back up to it, the more your dog will realize, oh, it's not that bad, because they have a choice. They have a choice. They get to decide if they want to do it or not. They are in control, and that's when it becomes a whole lot less scared. Now, granted, most dogs, when they finally get to the point where they're brave enough to put that foot up there, they're gonna go right back into it again. It's, it's no big deal. But for other dogs, you do need to move slowly and carefully. But again, you are empowering your dog by allowing them to get brave enough to make the decision on their own. So this is where our targets start to come in. If we have dogs who are just like, heck no, I'm not touching that thing, it's gonna bite me. Um, <laughs> I might take a paw target. So I just use like canlets that you get from the store. Um, you can use an old top to, I don't know, yogurt, like those plastic yogurt lids, just any small round circular disc that you can pop on the floor and teach your dog to put a footy on, a little, little paw target. So I might take my paw target and put it, maybe start it on the edge of the wobble board, more likely to start it on the floor, even more likely to start it a little more elevated with me holding it. Right, so it's not quite on the disc, but I can hold it right in front of it. And if my dog touches it with their foot, I'm gonna take that and continue to reward away. So they're making the choice to come back to me, to continue engaging in this game, and they're also making the choice to offer the paw touch to the target again. And when they're doing that without hesitation, then I might rest it on the wobble board, right, and wait for that foot to touch that target on top of the wobble board and continue to build from there. But again, the dog is making the choice. You're not trying to lure them any, it's, it's not a trap. That's what it comes down to, it's not a trap. I'm actually meeting dogs who are now aversive to lures <laughs> because we're luring our dogs through so many things. They see food come out and they're like, nope, it's a trap, I don't want it. Nope, trap, no thank you. <laughs> it's sad, <laughs> food shouldn't be a trap. Um, so let's go back to my bridge example and what would this look like applied in that context, right? So in that context, let's say here I am and there's my scary bridge over, I don't know, over yonder. I guess we can pretend it's the crate. So if I look at the scary bridge and someone over here, I don't know, rings a bell that means ice cream's coming, who knows, or says ice cream, like here's ice cream. Right, like I look at it, ice cream appears. 
uh, over here. Oh, brilliant. I'll, I'll, I'll go eat my ice cream. Yum, delicious. Thank you. I like ice cream. Oh gosh, more ice cream, right? And then, mm hmm. Ice cream, oh gosh, I had to lean in a little bit closer. That wasn't so bad. I see eventually, I'm gonna start to wonder what's up with this bridge that I look at it and ice cream falls from the sky over here. That's kind of cool. I kind of like this bridge. I look at this bridge, I get ice cream. I might take a step towards the bridge. What happens then? Well, I got more ice cream. Oh gosh, gee golly whiz. I'm gonna get closer and closer, but again, I'm empowering myself. I'm doing it. No one's luring me over there with ice cream. I am deciding on my own that I wanna see what this thing is about. So you see, we can empower our dogs to make hard decisions, but we have to help them. Um, so please, for the love of everything, Stop luring your dogs through scary situations because it's not fair, it's rude, they're going to figure out that fruit lures are traps and then you're going to find yourself in a really sticky situation because it, it's not a place you want to be. Trust me, I've, I've helped a lot of people rebuild their dog's trust in a training session because they got lured through so many scary things. So luring is great. I love luring for teaching basic skills. There's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes I even use lures and clickers. So, so everybody yell at me about that. <laughs> but don't lure through the scary stuff. Empower your dog to conquer their fears on their own without being driven by hot dogs. And that's today's Tangent Tuesday. I hope it made sense. Until next week, toodles.